into this talk um, by Corrine Welsh, um, talking about um, how to build a child theme and how Corrine built her first child theme with cats. Take it away, Corrine. That's lovely. Can everybody hear me okay? Excellent. Um, yeah, I'm Corinne Welsh. Um, I run a small company called Just Outsource It. Uh, the really interesting thing about my company is that we specialize only in free and open source software. So WordPress is one of the tools that we use. Um, and most of my day job is training, which doesn't mean that I'm not exceedingly nervous standing up here and talking to you. But thanks very much for coming along uh, on the second day of WordCamp. So, um, it's not entirely true that I don't know anything. There are lots of things I do know. Um, but about a year ago, I built my first child theme. So that's where I'm coming from. Um, I've built two child themes all together in my life. Uh, and I think that's quite a good stage at which to start talking to people about, um, you know, if you're approaching it for the first time, rather than somebody who's been building themes for years and years and knows the inside out of themes. And, uh, because I'm talking about themes, I thought it'd be really nice to have a theme for my slides. And uh, the best theme I could think of was a theme of cats and kittens. There will be pictures of cats. <laughs> so just to start off, um, what's a child theme? A uh, child theme is a theme that inherits and overrides its parents' template. And, uh, that kind of really means that we need to ask the question, what's a parent theme? And the parent theme in WordPress is any theme at all that doesn't rely on another theme that's created as a standalone theme. So any theme that isn't a child theme in WordPress counts as a parent theme, which is quite an interesting concept, you know, that you can have a theme uh, that's a parent that doesn't have children. So a parent theme doesn't depend on any other theme uh, to work or function, and a child theme depends entirely on its parent. So the first thing that you need for a child theme is you need a parent theme. And the parent theme has to be installed in order to activate the child theme. And the parent theme has to stay installed to run the child theme. So when you've built your child theme, you can't just delete your parent theme out of the folder, it has to stay there. So why make a child theme? Um, it means that you can change your theme safely. It means that when you get theme updates um, in the parent theme, uh, your theme isn't broken, it doesn't wipe out the, the changes that you've made. Um, you can customize the code of, by changing the code in the child theme without ever touching the parent theme. And that's what you do, you don't touch the parent theme at all. Um, when you update the parent theme, all your customizations stay within your child theme. And the child theme elegantly inherits those changes that have been made when the parent theme is updated. You don't have to do anything, you don't have to worry about that. And it was funny because I was talking to somebody on one of the stands downstairs yesterday, um, one of the sponsors, and we were chatting and I said I was doing this talk on child themes and he said, oh yes, he said, um, about a year ago I built my first child theme and, I, and it's fantastic because now I can update my theme anytime I like <laughs> and it's okay and I, I'm, you know, I don't have to worry about that. And I went, me too, and it was really exciting. So it's, uh, this is a rallying call that if you haven't ever built a child theme, it's... it's it's very doable, it's very easy, you can do it. <laughs> so talk about why you might build a child theme, and I think it's also really useful to know why not. Um, I made my first website in 1999. I made my first WordPress website in 2009. Um, I didn't make a child theme until about a year, a year and a half ago. Um, so the first reason that you might not do is because you're quite happy with the parent theme you've got. There are people out there, there are lots of people out there who know an awful lot more about design and themes and building themes and uh, all those sorts of things than I do. Uh, and I've been very happy with the parent themes that I've been using. If you want to make really, really minor changes, you might be using a theme that, well, I'm standing in front of my slides here, I'll stand back a little bit. Um, you might be using um, a theme that gives you the option of a, 
uh, a custom CSS, custom style CSS. And if you've got a theme with that option in it, you can make little changes. Um, I'd recommend that you keep a copy of that custom style CSS. But that might be the first stage to doing that, and that was certainly the way that I worked for a lot of years. And on the other side of that, um, if you've got really big major changes that you're making, uh, you'll probably find that a child theme isn't going to be enough ultimately, and ultimately you want to build your own theme. Um, and again, a way into that might be to start by using a theme framework and, and learn in that way. Um, and the other thing I would say is that you are, if you are using a theme framework and you're building themes like that, you are actually making a child theme off that framework, so it's, it is still a child theme. Um, my personal reason is that I have a, uh, an irrational fear of PHP. Uh, it scares me to death, it really does. Um, I think there's some rationality in that, which is why I put the irrational in, in brackets. Um, but uh, I've done my first and uh, primary programming language is Python, and you know, I've spoken to people who have a fear of Python, so it's, it's interesting. <laughs> um, and life is short. You know, there are lots of things that you can do in life, and um, maybe you don't want to. So um, let's ask why again. Uh, because you can, you know, life is sweet. Um, the other reason is that uh, because of the GPL, so the GNU General Public License, which is what WordPress is licensed under, uh, is based around four freedoms. And the second of those freedoms, uh, perversely called Freedom One, uh, is really centered on the fact that you've got the freedom to change the code, look at the code, change the code, make your computing do what it does. And that's really important. And the real um, underpinning element of that is learning and having access to the, the code so that you can learn. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's another reason why you might make a child theme. It's a really good way to learn about a theme. It's a really good way to learn about how themes work. It's a really good way to learn about how things are put together. And when I was thinking about this talk, I was kind of thinking about an engine, and that you know, a really good way of working out how an engine works is to take it apart and have a look at it. Or um, a really good way to understand how a poem works is to take it apart and put it back together again. Ultimately, it's quicker and, and easier. And that conversation that I had the, yesterday with one of the people on the sponsor stands, it was that thing of actually, you know, you can spend all your time kind of just making little changes and just giving notes of the changes that you've made to the parent theme, but ultimately it's just quicker and easier to, um, to kind of get over it and make a child theme. <laughs> uh, and really the, the other reason that you might want to do it is you have a need. So I had a need. <laughs> um, I have a builder's house. As I say, WordPress isn't the only thing that I do. Um, my company website doesn't always get the love and attention it needs to because I'm doing other things. Uh, I think that's probably quite a familiar position that people will be in. Uh, I checked to see whether my website was friendly. You can go here and you can check to see whether your website is mobile friendly. And um, again, about a year and a half ago, people were talking a lot about um, Google and Google search and algorithms. Um, and you can put your website address into there and find out whether it's mobile friendly. I did, and it wasn't. <laughs> and then I have this other site. So I had another site that I was working with, and having made one child theme, um, I kind of got the itch and went, and went on to make another one. I haven't done anything since with a um, child theme for a, about a year since then. <laughs> so let's get going on uh, uh, what you do. So when you download WordPress for the first time, this is what you see. This is a structure, and this is a group of files. And the directory that we're most interested in in this situation is WP content. And that's where the themes live. So within WP content, within that directory, you have a directory that's called themes. And interestingly enough, in your themes directory, you have a, a set of themes. And if we look inside one of those themes, we'll look inside 2016, that's what the inside of a theme looks like. So child theme essentials. Um, you need at least one directory and two files. 
Uh, so it's a child themed directory, and your two type files are style.css and the functions.php. So the second thing that you need for a child theme after you've got your parent theme is you need a child theme directory. You need somewhere to keep your files. So you make a, a child theme directory. You put it in WP content with your themes, WP content themes with your other themes. <laughs> um, and you give the directory um, a name. And the naming convention is to name it the parent theme name dash um, child. It's not compulsory to name it that. Um, there may be reasons you don't want to name it that. You might want to call it my groovy child theme, my first child theme. It's up to you. Uh, but the important thing is that you don't have any spaces in the theme name. And then the third thing that you need for a child theme is you need some style. You need a style.css, which is your child theme style sheet. And to make one of those, um, you open a text editor, text editor of your choice, um, and you um, make a file called style.css, and you put this header on it. And there are a number of fields that you can fill in in that header, some of which I filled in, some of which I haven't. Things like URL, your name, the license of your re release and the theme. Um, it's up to you how much of that you fill in or how much of that you leave. Um, but the two things that you absolutely need to fill in are the theme name and the template. They're the only two things that need to be filled in. Your theme name can be anything at all you like, um, but you need a name. And your template must be the exact name of the parent theme directory. So exactly as it appears, it's a case sensitive name, um, no spaces, etc. If you don't want to go on from there and change the CSS, um, the child style CSS loads after the parent CSS. Uh, it's cascades, as, uh, as it would suggest. And the later rules override the earlier ones. Um, a comment in CSS looks like that. You saw that on the previous slide with the, with the header. Um, and if you go back to the previous slide, can I go back? Yep, lovely. Um, your CSS changes go below the comment that's there. Um, only copy and add the styles that you're changing from the parent theme. And start simply, start with perhaps changes in colors, text margins. Um, I say that if you've not done any CSS, start at that point. Um, all the rules are inherited from the parent style. And um, there are browser tools that you can use where you can look to see what's happening in the CSS um, and lots of online help. And if you want to go off and do CSS for the rest of your life, there are lots of books and fun to be had. <laughs> So the fourth thing that you need for a child theme is you need to enqueue, and you need to enqueue the parent style sheet. And to do that, you use your functions PHP file. Um, it used to be um, that the recommended advice was that you didn't have necessarily have a functions.php child theme file, um, but you used an at import statement, and you put that import statement into the child um, theme style, style spreadsheet. Spreadsheet? Style sheet. <laughs> um, and that method's now deprecated. It's deprecated because it kind of slowed things down. And, this is actually the better way to do it. But you might still see advice that talks about import. So it's worth me saying that. Um, both the child and the parent PHP um, functions PHP files load. Um, the child themes functions PHP loads first. And the child themes functions PHP file is additive. So it doesn't override the parent's um, PHP file. And that's different from other child theme files. So like your style.css, you open a text editor and you create a functions.php file and you save that in your child theme directory alongside your style.css 
and this is what you write in it. And if you um, are panicking or thinking you can't remember that, it's all there in the codex, um, that, that very script. So I just want to give a, um, a health warning, and appropriately for a health warning, I've got a really nice text-heavy slide. Um, with the previous script that I've just shown you, um, the child theme style sheet usually just loads automatically. Um, if it doesn't, you'll need to enqueue the child, the child theme style sheet. Um, and that's the line that you add to that previous script to do that. And again, if you can't remember the line or you haven't got it down on time, it's in the codex. Um, if you've got more than one main CSS file, um, you need to enqueue inc those two. Um, I'm hesitant on all of these things because when I made mine, <laughs> I didn't hit against any of these problems. So I kind of want to say, well, it'll be fine, go ahead. Um, when I started to do research for this talk, it was like, oh, okay, this could have happened and this could have happened, okay. Um, so I just say that themes differ. Some themes make good parent themes, some themes don't. You may, may need theme-specific help, um, and apparently you may need to resave your menus and your theme options when you install a child theme. So some of the things that you might want to change um, with your, PHP, your other PHP template files, you might want to change, for example, the header or a footer or a sidebar. Um, and if you want to do that, you make a copy of the parent theme file and you put that in the child theme directory. And you make the changes to the PHP in the file in the child theme. And child theme PHP files override the parent template files that have the same name. Um, it might be that you want to go further than that and you want to add uh, new PHP templates. Uh, and you can just do that, so for example, you might be using a parent theme that doesn't have a sidebar, and one of the things that you want to put in your new theme is a sidebar, so you'd, you can add those. Um, and the last thing I'd say is to, um, to use comments in your child theme um, PHP to tell your future self what you've done and to track your changes. They're very handy, especially if you're like me, and you can't remember why, why you did something or how you did it. So just to sum up, The things you absolutely need for a child theme are you need a parent theme, and the parent theme has to be installed. Um, you need a child theme directory. You need a style sheet, style.css, and you need to enqueue. So you need a functions PHP. And there are a couple of things that I think are really nice to have. So one of them is a readme file. Again, you just make a simple text file, call it readme.txt, and that's your documentation. And it's a, it's a love letter to your future self, really. When you spend a lot of time working on something, um, you think you'll remember it forever, and then you find kind of two weeks later you don't remember it at all. So um, I'm a big fan of documentation, love documentation. Um, I come from a writing background, so <laughs> very comfortable with documentation. Um, and the screenshot, because uh, it's nice to have some visuals. If you don't have a screenshot, you'll get a very blank-looking uh, checkered template. Um, it's a nice thing to do when you finish making your child theme. It makes you feel good. Uh, it should be a PHPNG file. Uh, you call it screenshot.png. And the recommended size for that is 880 by 660 pixels. And again, you just save that in your child theme directory. So I thought it would be really useful for me just to talk through briefly uh, what I did with my child themes and, and the, the ways that I was using them. So for the first site that I was telling you about, my, my main working site, um, it meant that I kept the visual elements of that site, but it was now responsive. So I did things like I took the, um, the header image and the footer image, so visually I kept that kind of style. Um, but the, the whole workings of the site was with my new parent theme, or from my new parent theme. Um, I didn't make any changes at all to the PHP on that site. 
Um, I did direct with some images that were referenced by the CSS. Um, so one of them was um, I made some icons that gave me um, a custom, custom bullets, which is quite a nice thing to do, and a couple of other additions in the style.css. And then having made that child theme and going on to make another one, um, I had a particular use case, and it was a, a, a sort of idiosyncratic need of mine. Um, with a practical basis. So um, I had a WordPress.com site, a site that was hosted on WordPress.com, and I wanted to make my self-hosted site look exactly like the, the way it looked on WordPress.com. It was for a training course, and it was for selling training. Um, and on that thing, sort of uh, almost like the opposite of the, the other one, um, I didn't make any changes at all to the CSS file. That, that wasn't really what it was about. But I did need to um, uh, add a child theme header and footer files. And then outside the theme, to kind of make everything look the same, I used a couple of relevant plugins. So again, there's things that will kind of impact on the, the look of your site beyond the theme. So when you've made your theme and you've put your readme and your screenshot in, you'll end up with a lovely directory that looks like this, that will sit alongside your parent theme directory. Um, so you need a parent theme, a child theme directory, your style sheet, you need to enqueue your styles, um, a nice readme file with your documentation for your future self, um, and a, a screenshot. And that really sort of sums it up. Um, when I made those slides and put them together, I kind of thought, well, at the end of them, I'll have some resources. But really, I've kind of talked about the sort of two main resources that, that, um, that I would have mentioned here. So one of those is the codex. The codex is fantastic. Everything is there in there. Um, yeah, read the codex. It's great. <laughs> read the documentation. Keep your own documentation. Read other people's documentation. Um, and the other resource that I think was worth, really worth mentioning was the um, using the browser tools and the toolbars um, in the browser. But I thought that as we're going to be going into questions, if anybody else had any ideas of resources or things that can help people kind of go a bit further with theming or to get started, I'm more than happy for those sort of suggestions too. So uh, happy to take any questions. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Corinne. Um, OK, so we've got about 10 minutes for questions. Um, and we've got some mic runners. You guys know the drill by now. Um, so put your hand up, and we'll get a mic to you. Go. Um, thanks, Corinne. That was a useful talk. It's one of the things that I've always toyed with um, a child themes, but I've, I've actually never actually built one myself. One of the th reasons for that potentially is that on some themes where I've thought about basing a client's theme on one of the default themes, I, it seems as though um, I will have ended up changing so many files that it's almost, it almost seems as though it's not worth it. Have, have you ever sort of come across that too yourself and, and sort of is that the point that you'd say it was potentially the sort of the decision point about whether or not it's worth doing? Yes, I mean I, 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 I think that, that definitely sort of fits into the if you're making major changes you're kind of better off starting from scratch often. Um, you know you do have, there is that, that belief that if you make a child theme your updates are safe forever and everything will be wonderful. Um, there are scenarios where somebody changes the parent theme so significantly, you know, that your that your child theme ends up broken. Uh, so, yeah, I think I think there's a, and you know, it's a little bit of kind of um, how much do you want to do and how much do you want to control, you know, and how much do you want to, you know, there's a there's a real benefit from building things from scratch yourself from the inside out and knowing it thoroughly and not having to sort of learn somebody else's practices and learn somebody else's what they've done here and what they've done there. So yes, I think that's a, I think there's a very valid reasons, you know, to make your own theme and not, not build from a child theme. That's a, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, 
Hi, thank you. Hi. One of the issues that I've had with child themes sometimes is when a lot of CSS rules are bundled up in the parent theme and it's kind of difficult to unpick them for the child theme. Have you got any tips on coping with that? So, so I didn't hear you very well, so it was about unpicking um, what's going on in the parent CSS. Yeah, there's a lot of style that's all bundled together that's all bundled in one together. style rule. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know a lot about CSS, so I can't, I can't be very helpful. Um, I think looking at the browser toolbars, um, try, just trying it out is always the best thing. Take a piece, see how it works, change one thing at a time rather than changing lots of things together to see whether you can work out where things come from. Um, I don't know whether you were in the talk yesterday, but there was a really good talk on the um, uh, Chrome Dev uh, browser tools. So it might be worth looking back at that talk to see whether there's more depth that you can get from the browser tools that you're getting at the moment. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I'm not sure that's been very helpful, but. <laughs> okay, thanks. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, so I guess you've talked about parent themes and child themes, um, but there's also um, things called theme frameworks and starter themes. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder, as a uh, someone who's setting out to build themselves a theme, how do you how do you kind of approach deciding should I be using a theme framework or a starter theme or a child theme or a parent theme? Yeah. I, um I've never used a theme framework, so I don't know. Um, and you know, and I know there are issues with just using a, th a theme framework, and there are people who love them, and there are people who hate them, and um, to do with kind of weight and, and bulk and what you're doing with it. Uh, from my point of view, for kind of sort of starting out in sort of theming and uh, WordPress, it was an easier start to start with a child theme. So I, I could I could imagine that you could progress. So you could start by making a child theme. Um, feel a bit visually around, around themes, then use a theme framework and learn a little bit more, and then go on from there and build your own theme, which isn't to say that you couldn't just jump straight into building your own theme from scratch if that's, if that's what your inclination is. So I think that um, it can be progressive, it can be steps, I'd recommend that. That's a, a nice way to learn. Um, but I'm all for people kind of diving in and taking things apart and trying things out. Um, it's probably something I'll probably look at next, or I'll have a look, maybe have a look at the uh, frameworks. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, maybe. <laughs> maybe I might build another child theme, I don't know. <laughs> Most of the things that I've wanted to do, I've, I've, um, I've wanted to inherit so much of the look of the original theme and most of what they've done that that's kind of been, been where I've wanted to go with it. And the idea of kind of starting with a framework would mean that I'd need to kind of think about how things looked, <laughs> and I'm not sure that uh, I'm not sure that I necessarily always have the time and the inclination to do that <laughs> with WordPress. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, another one I thought of is um, I once heard of the concept. Not I've only heard of it just the once. I think was that someone actually mentioned about grandchild themes. Um, I'm not sure if it was an April Fool, actually, it might have been, I suppose. <laughs> but um, have you heard of those, and, and do you know what, anything about that? Okay, I don't, I don't know anything about them. I, I have heard of them, in, in, again, in the uh, research in this talk, because I, I made my things a year ago and then hadn't kind of thought about it again, and then uh, I was like, oh, no, I've got to do a talk now, and I, I can't remember what I did, and that, that kind of stuff. So, yes, I did come across then the, the concept of grandparent themes. And I suppose you could have great, great grandchild themes as well and, and go further down. Um, it would be, it would be, structurally, it would be a child theme. It would be the child of the child, wouldn't it? Yeah. So it, it would be, I suppose, if we're looking at 2016 child, child, if you wanted to name it that. Um, but it would, it would inherit, really, it would inherit from the child theme above it. Hmm. Um, yeah. I I, and I suppose the other way that you maybe you might, might come at that is if you'd made, you know, your child theme and then you were going on from there and doing some other further things within your own kind of work environment to, to make that, I'm not sure. I guess so, yeah, because I couldn't really think of any reason why you'd want to do that, but it's just, that's why I asked if you'd yeah. heard of it, you know. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you'd have a setup where you had, I don't know, say half a dozen sites, mm. and um, they were built as child themes on a, a main parent, 
and then each of those half a dozen sites you wanted, I don't know, to change the colour of the background on across them for different mm. organisations, and then maybe structurally then that would that would kind of fit into the realm of the child theme. <laughs> Gone child theme. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Following, following on from that, uh, WooCommerce is now basing all their themes around a kind of theme framework. So you kind of start off with a child theme. And to extend on that, what they're actually suggesting is to write your own plugin, which then hooks into the child theme to kind of have, allow you to have the grandchild theme ability, which I thought might be worth noting. Thank you. Because I was going to say, again, when I was, I was looking kind of at research into this, I then came across plugins that would make you a child theme and things like that. And um, I don't know, I just like to be a little bit closer to things than that. <laughs> so thank you. Are we done? <laughs> OK, I think we're done. Thank you very much, Corinne. Let's give her a big round of applause.